Well, we're getting a little bit of snow. So, <clears throat> instead of flying today, I think I'm going to do a little bench testing with my LiPo batteries. Let's check it out. Alright, what I got going on here today is uh, I'm taking all of my 850 and larger packs. I mainly fly 4S and 3S. And I charge up the packs to the very top and then discharge them either through my HTRC T150 or the M800 and then uh, discharge them down to three and a half volts per cell and measure the uh, the milliamp hour capacity that I get back out after discharging it. So this particular pack which is a 1500 it's finishing up its charge right now. It's at a hundred percent Once it finishes, it's got a little bit left. You can see the two point, the point two amps still flowing into it. Get that topped off. <clears throat> this one's already done. There it goes. It says it's done, so stop. So what I'm going to do is go to discharge. I'm going to make sure the end voltage is at. Three and a half volts, 4S pack, max discharge current of 2 amps, and hit start. So you'll start to see how many milliamp hours will be coming out, what current it's actually drawing it out at. And this particular charger, even though I set it up for 2 amps, it, it seems to stay under an amp almost the whole time. I don't know if that, based on the pack or number of cells, but this particular one's a 4S 1500 pack. And you can see the voltage that's on the pack that's coming down. Now let's go back to the cell level and see what it adds up to there. Same kind of routine here on the M800 where <clears throat> I put it on a LiPo automatic, enter, we're going to put it on discharge, we're going to have the max discharge at, let's put that at 2 also. Discharge. Discharge at three and a half volts per cell, yes. And now it's starting. Now this is powered by my bench supply. Shouldn't it won't be drawing any real big current out of it as it's discharging. I have noticed when I've watched this on some of these earlier packs that it will do well over an amp during the discharge process and then you can see the per cell voltage here and the milliamp hours that are coming out here. So the idea is we'll run both of these until they stop and I'll just mark down in my notes what I'm getting for capacity coming out of each of the packs. And that way I can determine which packs are holding up and which ones are starting to get weak. All right, I'm gonna put the camera on this one and we'll watch it do its thing. All right, while this is going, I'll show you where we're at here. This pack here, it's been, if you look, at 91 minutes. It's only discharging at 0.8 amps. 
so far it's uh, reading 1214, 1215 milliamp hours and we're at about 3.7 volts. We want to get down to 3.5 and then it should shut off. You can see the state of charge there at 11 percent. And this other one here, let me shut the light off. You can see we're about 3.7 volts. Discharge rate is at 0.67 amps. And this pack only has 913 milliamp hours. And we're also at about 90 minutes there up on top. So it takes quite a while to do a discharge on both of these units. Alright, well, this one's still going. This one's done. It says 14, 27 milliamp hours, but what's concerning is its the voltage is continuing to drop. So I'm going to stop it here. quick charge it here. So I'm actually going to put this one on storage charge. That goes to 385. And that should bring it right up and stop. Alright, it took that fast charge up to storage voltage 3.85. So that's looking good. One over here, capacity about 13 or 4, 1250 or so. All right, so I got the testing done. Uh, let me go over the results one by one. So I bought four of these packs back in the middle of 2019. I bought four packs. Uh, three of them have survived. The first one I tested here on this session here does have one bad cell. I'll just show you how it shows up on the checker. So it comes up with the whole pack at 94, but if you if you do individual cells, this is the first cell 4.2, second cell 4.2, third cell only at 3.8. And only 28%. So you really does help to have a checker like this to really kind of know where you're at. A lot of times you put the pack on and try to fly it, and you don't get 20 seconds out and it's dying on you. So it's one of the reasons I do this kind of testing. <clears throat> so this pack, I'll probably uh, keep it offline and I'll use the cells from it if I need to rebuild any of these other two. So the testing of pack number two, again these are 850s. Uh, it came out 808 instead of 850. And pack number four came out at 810. So they're very close. They have not even lost 10% in two and a half years or so. So that's the story on those. And I got those on Amazon originally. So here's the, here's the next set of packs that I also bought. They're all the same, these gold bat 1500s, 4S, and they're all in good shape. I think there was one that I did have to do some surgery on. You can see that there. But just to give you some of the results, pack number one gives, now gives 1250 instead of the 1500. Pack number two does 1420, so that's pretty good. Pack number three, also 1425, and this one here is 1300. So, there's still some got some pretty good life in it, so I'm pretty happy about those packs. Again, bought those in 2019 on Amazon. Now most of the flying I've been doing, I do with 3S because I'm flying mainly two and a half inch uh, whoops. 
uh, usually carrying an Insta360 GO camera. And I have found that these 3S 850s give me the most seconds for the weight. Uh, so they're pretty efficient compared to the other sizes. And uh, I haven't had any real trouble with uh, the smaller sizes, the 650 and the 450, as far as them going bad on me. But these 850s, you know, if you actually were here and feeling down, you'd find a few of these are getting a little spongy. So I keep, uh, it's good to do some testing to find out really where they're at. So on this particular number four here, when I tested it, it's supposed to be 850. I actually tested at 890. Number three, again, got a little sponge going on there. It's supposed to be 850. It actually tested at 912. So this one too is exceeding its rating. Number two here is actually the spongiest of them all at the moment. That one's only testing at 720. This last one here, number one, also not as bad as number two as far as sponginess goes. First time I tested this during my testing here, it was coming out at only 430 milliamp hours. I charged it all the way back up again, ran it again. Second time it came out 567. I did it a third time, it came out 617. I did a fourth time and it went up to 628. So I think that's about as much as this one's getting. So this is of all the four packs that I'm showing here, this one's definitely the weakest and I'll probably mark it somehow because if it's not giving me the full capacity or anywhere near it, I'm not gonna get the seconds of flight time when I'm trying to capture video of a certain length. So that's why I'm doing the testing. Kind of get some get some stuff down so I don't get surprised flying with a, a pack that turns out to look good as far as the takeoff voltage, but it you know doesn't give me the, the flight time that it should given its milliamp hour rating. Alright. Hope you enjoyed this. Tell me what your experience is with some of these batteries. And I'll talk to you later.